before we start, the accuracy in this documentary is the best we've ever gotten. This documentary will most likely be outdated in a couple of decades, but right now, it's the best thing we've got. Hattag Island is where Dwayne Johnson's Jungle Cruise takes place. There are about four dinosaurs we see that are from this island. This island is home to some pretty whack dinosaurs, and I really want to see where they go with it. Also, it basically confirms that any dinosaur from the island could be there. Zalmoxis is an iguanodontid that is incredibly small and is found on Hateg Island. They're absolutely adorable. Magiarosaurus is my favorite sauropod of all time. It is ironically enough a titanosaur while only being about the size of a buffalo. Hatscopteryx was the apex predator on Hateg Island. It is speculated that a species of pterosaur flew to the island and seeing that there were no predators, it evolved to fill that niche and it is likely the largest thing that ever flew. It's got the goofy ah rs They took the design from All Yesterdays and made a T-pose as a mating display. It's the most accurate depiction of Carnotaurus we have gotten so far, with the osteoderms being almost exactly like the skin impressions. I'm looking forward to seeing more of this guy, or and gal. Bloor Bondock is a species of flightless bird that used to be classified as a dromaeosaur. It is also native to Hateg Island. It likely evolved to become flightless due to the fact that flying requires a lot of resources, and for the longest time, there were no predators, so there really wasn't a point. Amptosaurus. Dope ah Mongolian sauropod. It has a cool crest thing on the top of its head, and, now I might be wrong about this, it is very speculated. This is also obviously from the Nemtic formation because of the, you know, the name. The Nemgt Basin is something that I can't pronounce. It is located in the southern part of Mongolia at exactly 4330 north, 10100 east in the bottom left. There's not much information on this formation. It's known for many fossil finds, dinosaur eggs, and trace fossils. Barsboldia is the default hadrosaur. Nothing to talk about here, and that Mongolian formation I can't pronounce. Feathered dinosaurs. In this documentary, the artists actually made it accurate. They feathered the dinosaurs. I really enjoy how they did not pull the old trick and just cover them half. <coughs> Jurassic Park. <coughs> because of the fact that they're hard to animate. They went all out. Forgot about how much it costs. Forgot about how much it would take away from the viewer base. And just went for it. And from the reviews, it seems to be working out. The big old T-Rex is actually looking dripped out of his mind. As you can see in the trailer, the Tyrannosaurus rex seems to be morbidly obese, but this is actually its gastralia. The gastralia are a set of bones that look like additional ribs. We know the T-Rex has gastralia because of the fossil Sioux. It is also one of the rarer fossils to be found because they appear to not have fossilized very well. Gastralias are also found in other theropods, prosauropods, pterosaurs, plesiosaurs, and some older... Yeah. This is an awesome addition to the more commonly perceived T-Rex, because looking like a giant barrel is so much cooler. I also have a video about this, you should check it out. They gave the titanosaurs air sacs. Not going too in depth because I made a video on this already, but here we go. The, what seem to be titanosaurs, have air sacs. This is one of the more highly speculated things to come out of the trailer. Which is surprising since David Attenborough stated that he didn't want to commentate highly speculated things. The sauropods use these air sacs to support their weight, because if they didn't have them, they would crumble under their own weight. Scientists know that sauropods had air sacs, but they can only speculate whether they can puff them up. So I'm glad the show is going for a more experimental approach. The docu takes place in the late Cretaceous. Not really much to talk about here. Dinosaurs are all going to be from the late Cretaceous. The show is going to take place in these two continents. In the newest trailer, we get to see the Island of Dwarf Dinosaurs, Mongolia, Prince Creek, and Hell Creek. The show makes a lot of tributes to walking with dinosaurs, so we'll read them as a list. Number one, the intro. The sun rising up with the Apple TV logo in the center is a callback to the 1999 intro when the sun rises up behind a mountain with the logo present. Two, the sound design is similar in theory. The sound design was what made Walking with Dinosaurs so much better, and it seems like Apple TV is taking notes from the right show. Also, the music so far seems to be to take aspects of the environment to convey the sound. Number three, the narration of the show is also quite similar to Walking with Dinosaurs, minus the fact that it's David Attenborough, and he's a slight amount older than the narrator of Walking with Dinosaurs. 
If this show is taking notes from the best dinosaur documentary, then I have high hopes that it is going to be one of the best dinosaur documentaries of the 21st century. Ginzosaurus lived from about 72 to 66 million years ago, and it got to see the last days of the dinosaurs. It was not the largest Tyrannosaur, but it was most likely very quick. This will be Chansusaurus's first live appearance, unless you count Jurassic World Evolution 2 for some reason, which is very exciting. Also, if you can send me a video of you saying Chansosaurus 10 times without stuttering, I'll give you a shout out. The place you're shown in the trailer is exceptionally realistic, but I want to touch primarily on the coloration. The plesiosaur in the trailer is, uses countershading, a tactic that plesiosaurs and other aquatic reptiles probably use in life as it can be observed in other marine animals such as sharks and orcas. <laughs> they got this dude dripped out of his mind. Actual drip. In all honesty though, it seems like there's just not that much to talk about here. It's a really well done feathered velociraptor that appears to have been done just as well as the T-Rex. This is the most inspiring thing in the whole show. Fun fact, the turtles used in the show were actually real turtles, and they used a live T-Rex to scare them back into the oceans. I love turtles so much, and I hope they can get more screen time than just what's shown in the first teaser. Also, they better not get killed in the show, or I'm going to be throwing hands. Nanuxaurus was a tyrannosaur from the Prince Creek Formation around 70 to 68 million years ago. It was long thought to be Gorgosaurus, but more recent studies deem it as its own genus. As you can imagine, with a name that literally translates to polar bear lizard, it lived in an arctic environment that is accurately depicted in the show. Nanotyrannus, young T-Rex. Nanotyrannus, young T-Rex. Blue over after it is one of the more out there designs in the show. The bright blue feathers are a stretch for me, but honestly, not looking at it from a scientific standpoint, it looks pretty cool. It's in the scene with the Chansosaurus, so the episode that it is featured in is most likely going to be in the Prince Creek Formation in Alaska. It's a generic Pachyrhinosaurus. It's not really on screen for very long. As a musician, the sound design that is shown in the first trailer is immaculate. Hans Zimmer is the man behind the soundtrack, and if you've ever heard any of his works, you would know that it's going to be good even before listening to it. Hans Zimmer is one of my favorite composers, and it seems like everything he touches is a masterpiece. So I'm glad Apple bit the bullet and picked up Hans Zimmer for the soundtrack, because it's only going to make the experience that much better. When I saw Sir David Attenborough was casted as the narrator, my head broke. My man is 95 years old and said he didn't want to do shows with high amounts of speculation. And yet here he is, doing a documentary with feathered dinosaurs and air sacs. My man is a legend, and I know he's going to be the best person they could have casted. Also, if you want to hear him, he narrates a little bit of the teaser that Apple TV released not too long ago. If you didn't already know, this documentary comes out on May 23rd and runs through the 27th. If you watch this and want another opinion before you go watch it, I highly recommend it. And if my opinion isn't enough, there's tons of others that recommend watching it as well. Uh, thanks for watching this uh, video on the documentary for Prehistoric Planet. Uh, this is just all we know so far um, before they might release another trailer. Um, uh, my friend uh, Titus the Trilobite was in this video, and uh, I'd recommend subscribing to him. He's uh, he's he's a pretty cool lad, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna let this run till 10 minutes and four seconds because I want to get it monetized. Thank you. Goodbye.